This conference will now be recorded. Uh, I get there is, I have, it did not prompt me for anything. I just had the start button. Okay, well, well, we'll find out. We'll find out from Kevin where it actually goes. Okay. Because normally, if I've done this before, it just sends me an email when it's done and says, here, pick it up here. And then I just copy it into my uh, Google Google file. Um, so it's preserved and then I link to it. So, yeah, I don't I, know. I, I see no options for that. Okay. The settings doesn't show anything. I don't know, John. So, okay, well, we'll find out. I'll, I'll do hand minutes until we get the recording figured out. Okay, okay well, do you guys see my agenda? Yes, and, and the recording has started. Maybe. <laughs> Fine, okay. Uh, so for, for IC pass downs, uh, I'll just go back here. Uh, basically, I keep a running total of um, what happens at the last IC meeting. Um, and so these are, are, so I begin to, these are just, just upcoming meetings to still a, uh, that OCP sustainability uh, Seminar, which is occurring along with APTS. Um, and so it's being, I know it's being announced at uh, the Data Center Facilities Sustainability Project today. In any second now, we should get a notice from uh, um, OCP uh, staff, uh, a broadcast. Um, there are a couple of other meetings, and then uh, what I keep on a monthly basis is all the contributions which are coming up uh, through the IC. Because once it gets presented at IC, the information is considered uh, public. And so if there's interest in, in any of this, I can forward it to you. Okay. Back to Mets. Um, so uh, the, the main issue that I have uh, specifically, and then we'll go to more, the general ones, which I don't think we're going to make much progress on, is this uh, a change from the old uh, uh, power thermal model to the new subsystem model. And as I uh, outlined last week on the process, is that we go update this usage guide. And the usage guide just tells you what the interaction is going to look like. And then once everyone agrees upon that, because it agrees, needs agreement for people who don't understand the profile syntax, uh, then we can just go generate the, the profiles fairly quickly from there. So if you follow this link, You get to this document. Uh, I'm going to collapse this thing. Ah, that's okay. Um, so these are the changes that are made. And I'll start with the oops, wrong document. Okay, this document. You guys see the document? Yes. Oh, if I haven't lost you guys. Okay. So um, this is now the so uh, the changes were made to uh, uh, power consumption, power limit, power redundancy, which I added, uh, firmware power, power power supplies, and temperature and families. So now all these sections have uh, using the total power sensor resource, and then this is where the old one was, which is using the power resource. Um, so I'll go into each one of these, uh, which now have a, a selection. So right now it says or, um, we can change that in the future. Let's see, can I click through, no I can't, I got one there. Uh, oh, here it goes. Okay, so for power, power state is the same. Okay, so to get power consumption, I do not get fine control of this thing. Okay, if we get power consumption, it has this, oh, it's weird. Wait a minute, maybe we can do this. Ah, much better. Uh, is obtained from the chassis resource. The power consumption can be obtained in two ways via the power resource or the total power uh, sensor resource. So I need to flip this. So this, I started adding it afterwards, but I decided to add it as 0.1 uh, 
uh, for the new way of doing it so people start, don't start reading the old way. Um, so this is basically to get the uh, power consumption is to get the total power resource. So what this does is that this actually names a member of a collection. And, I, uh, and this makes it prescriptive that this name doesn't change anymore to, in order to be, be interoperable. I want to make sure that was okay. <laughs> Okay, no, no objection, so I'm fine. Uh, power limit is using the power limit control resource, which is now naming a control with uh, an instance of, of control. Uh, power side redundancy is that I can use the power subsystem resource and I just get it easily. Uh, this is not available. Don't believe with the old power resource that there was no way of actually getting uh, redundancy. I want to make sure that was correct and I wasn't misstating it. I should. There's another section here for getting power redundancy with the old model. Uh, I looked and I couldn't find it. It's okay, I I I thought it was John, but maybe it wasn't. Right. And I didn't want to spend too much time on it because I didn't want people using it anyway. Right. Because, <laughs> right. So this was actually added because it made uh, getting the uh, power version easier. Because uh, because once you get the power redundancy, you can go to each one of these uh, power supplies in each bay and go get it. And so what I found was, and this is the other issue that I had, was that there are two ways to get into power supply. There was one way, which is basically going to do power subsystems, and the other way, which is power equipment, which has a power supply. Um, you get to the same element, and I didn't know if so that, this is that one, something yeah. we should deprecate. Yeah, we, we've, uh, we already deprecated, well, we deprecated that in the schema, because that was added for, uh, that was added that was our initial ad for PowerShelf. Uh, and then once we unified the model to put, to, to require all the power equipment to have a chassis, uh, we deprecated the power supplies under power equipment in favor of the power supplies under chassis, which is where they're at for every other piece of uh, gear. Okay, so when I look at the schema file for power supplies, it still has this path in its UI, URI pass. Uh -huh. So should that be removed? Okay, uh, the, well, those should be deprecated. Uh, I'll check to see if those are yes. deprecated. So when it's deprecated, deprecated does, it, does it still exist? Because that's the only way I found out about power equipment was I looked at power supply schema. Okay, uh, I'll check, but yes, we can deprecate URIs. Okay. Um, I don't know, I don't know if that's in the, I don't think it's in the output of the document generator yet. Okay, then I'll, get, then I'll just remove this. That's good. That's good. And then temperature is uh, oh, it doesn't change. Oh yeah, it does change. So there are two ways to getting temperature. One is through the temp sensor, which I now name, um, and then um, the old way to to thermal. That doesn't change. So one question I had here was, which sensor do we use? Because under sensor, there's ambient, there's intake, and there's exhaust. So in the old model, there was basically a temperature you could go get. Uh, in the new model, it's unclear. Wait a minute. Why is this complaining about my file sharing? Are you seeing this, the file? Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing fine. Uh, oh, I've got a big flashing thing which says that. Oh, I got. It looks, I know looks, it looks good here. No, no, it got it got covered up by uh, um, my wellness pop up, which says <laughs> I need to exercise. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
Oh yeah. Okay. So we're back in here. So so anyway, there's this uh, three temp temperatures I can select even if I decide out. I'm going to name an instance of sensor. So, uh, okay. So the temp. Okay. I'm sorry. You, this your temperature. This is not temperature in the power. Let's just temp. So we have the uh, we have that structure for uh, for temperature in the new model under thermal metrics. That's where that structure for ambient is, so that you don't have to rely on other names or or uh, or physical context. Okay, so I should be using uh, temperature metrics or thermal metrics. Thermal metrics, yeah. And that will point me to whatever sensor I need to. Correct. Yeah, but there will okay, be good. a uh, there will be in under temperature summary Celsius. There are there are named uh, resources for ambient exhaust intake and internal. So we can you can pick whichever one of those you need. Okay, so it's a two step process here. I just I get, go to thermometrics. And then I go fetch the actual temperature. Or is that? Oh, is in metrics? Oh, it's, there's there's, oh, extra, there's there. excerpts in, in in thermal metrics. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, and then get fan redundancies. And, so and there was no way you can. There was there was redundancy. There is a redundancy object in the old power power supplies uh array there there is there was a the and it's the old style redundancy object does exist you know two two or three objects deep in that in the old power resource so it is there if you want to if you want to do that <laughs> do, do we want to because it actually in the one that zero spec it wasn't power redundancy wasn't even yeah. Uh, I, I certainly would not start that test. now. Okay, that, I'm I'm fine with that. Okay, thank thanks thanks anyway. Uh, so anyway, for family redundancy, um, we go into the thermal subsystem. Get your family redundancy. You go to each individual fan, and you can now uh, at the bottom get the actual uh, fan reading. Yeah, so well, if you have a fan resource, you just put the fan and get you your speeds. And then um, using the old thermal model, you you got the um, system. The only question I have here is this reading, you don't have a unit here? Is that not required? Because you actually don't know what 45 is a percentage. It's percent. Yes, you do, you do. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, this works, that's fine. Oh, I should go note that this person there is I should note that why there isn't a reading unit here because it's yeah yeah Re reading always fo yeah it follow follows the the units given in the in the object name right okay o always okay and that's it so I think in the issues Yeah, we covered all the issues. That's dealt with. Oh, this is the uh, power equipment uh, in the um, schema, for possibly. Uh, I did look, John, and and yes, the the that that power shelves URI has been deprecated. So I grabbed this from the latest. Um, so yeah, so the way that they get deprecated is that they're added to the URI's deprecated annotation so that the, the list of supported are not changed because we didn't want to have to do downstream tool changes for uh, for conformance testing. Because if we took those out of that list, then they wouldn't be, um, you know, the, then, they, they, then they would be flagged as non-conforming as opposed to deprecated. Okay, so they'll exist in that URI um property pattern or whatever but it's, but it's not, it's not, not yeah. 
yeah, there's a, there's a, there's another schema annotation next right, and it's it's right underneath the URIs. There's the deprecated URIs annotation that that will show any of the things in that list that have been deprecated. Okay, thanks. I'm going to learn more about schema than I wanted to. <laughs> okay, uh, so we addressed two. I think we have addressed three. No one had an issue that we're going to go start naming this stuff. Um, and you added to the last one. Okay, we're cool. So with that, if if that's agree, I'm gonna let this uh, um, the document rest for a while, and you can go just update the profile itself. And then we'll we'll review the profile uh, at the next meeting. So which means the only other change to change the baseline is this uh, issue about changing. If you guys make heads or tails of this issue, then we can resolve it. If not, I'll go look into it. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to go look at it, John. Then. Okay, yeah, if you, if you can, that'd be great. If, if, if. Was whether we actually had to make this change or whether he just misread it. Okay, and so that's it for the baseline. Um, with that, we can go uh, push out a new uh, updated profile. And then the rest are the stuff I'm going to do next, which is all the changes to these um, uh, server profile thing needs to change. Okay, uh, that. So that's digital 25. We dealt with the no pull requests and we dispositioned all the issues. So, with that, I think we are done. Anyone got any other issues or things to bring up? Oh, I got one thing. Um, so, um, Celestica was interested in doing a switch profile. Since they have a switch and they've um, they uh, satisfied the baseline, so I asked them, "Do you want to do stuff for initial switch? We can at least go create a initial networking profile, which extends the baseline." And so he's interested in doing that. I've sent him the um, uh, user's document, and I said, "Hey, all you gotta do is fill out what uh, management task you want to complete, um, and then we can go write a user's guide for it." Get the use guide approved, and then we can go extend the the schema into networking. John, I had so one. I, I know you. Go ahead. Go, oh no, I knew you guys were interested in doing profiles, so I wanted yeah. to know at least this one's making its way forward. Yeah. So a question I had for the for the group, at, and you know. It really is a, a for the for the community question from the for a baseline was because uh, you know looking at the 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 current baseline doesn't have the doesn't have a firmware update um, and I'm wondering do we want to you know does as OCP do we want to spec out uh, one of the the push or the pull method to say you know should you do both or or you know is either uh, an acceptable answer. I I don't I don't know, especially as we get out into the componentry or other kind of the non VMC stuff. I I don't know what the uh, I don't know what the preference for the from the user community would be. Um, the way I've normally done this is first add it to the server profile. Yeah. Because then you can get a discussion within the server group, right? And they'll they'll pick one right? or both. Right. And then, so, and then I, was, yeah, my question was more of of G when we get outside of the server profile, you know, it, because I, I would think that that firmware, you know, the ability to do firmware update through the standard means would be something that we would like to put in the baseline eventually, right? So I mean, if you're a managed device, you ought to be able to have your firmware updated through one of the existing tool sets. Um, but I, but is there a, do we have you know is there a preference or a 
uh, a, a more widely adopted methodology, the, the push or the pull method? I don't know. Right. So, so that's why I do this in a stepwise way, right? And then you send a general notice out to the entire community saying, we're doing this in server, we'd like to do it in baseline, you know, uh, here's, a, here's a poll, can we put it in baseline? Mm -hmm. Right, and if the baseline, right, is it gonna be push or pull, and uh, should we allow, you know, are we ever gonna reach consensus, right? Or have uh, each individual platform like networking already, already picked its way, and it's not gonna change for a while. So in that case, you have firmware update for each of the platforms as extensions, but you can't get it into the baseline unless the baseline supports both. Right. Okay. Right. And that's a fine place to be because everyone at least is, knows how to use Redfish to do a uh, firmware update. Um, um, this group does it pull, this does, does it push. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you, if you can get it down to one or the other, that's a, that's a fine, that's a major improvement over the existing stance, right? So two, two is better than N. Exactly. Yeah. Do we ever get it down to one? I have no idea. Right, but you get you, then people, someone doing storage can say, oh, well, everyone in storage does push, right? Right, push. and that's almost the kind of that's my expectation would be if I if I was going to predict the outcome, it would be uh, you know that that by by class of product, it probably goes to you know everyone in the storage does it this way, and and you know and fo folks in networking do it this way, and that's kind of the they they probably tend to gel that. And that do and do they agree with each other? Who knows? <laughs> okay, so uh, the way to start this discussion is someone files an issue. Yeah. Okay. Against the profile, right? And you can do it either with server or baseline. But in the discussion, I'll I'll just push out the issue to to the various groups and say, hey, <laughs> we now have an issue we need to resolve. Right? Go go uh, give us your opinion on whether it should be push or pull or both. Right. Okay. But we have some places to start collecting all that, you know, community feedback. Yep, and the GitHub issues is a fine way, fine place to collect that. Right. Okay. And I think since Mickey's here, is he still here? Oh, but my question was, when do you, when do you expect to have your profile? started uh i mean i'm starting things i don't know uh i i, ha I haven't uh, i haven't gotten it to a, a a reasonable set for to send out for internal review yet but that's my, that's going to be my first step uh so i i would not expect it you know for at least a at least a month okay just just based on what, what i know how long it will take to get an internal cycle done something available by global summit oh yeah yeah by global summit yeah okay yeah because we're we're, we're, we're looking at abstracts for global summit oh, okay and if he's going to be ready or if it's been out there a while he might want to yeah yeah review oh no no that's that, that's a that's an excellent place john that would be okay so <laughs> With that, we've definitely reached the end of the uh, agenda. So I'll give you back your time, guys. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. And we